Good evening. <coughs> uh, can I have an indication who is here for the first time? Quite a few. Okay, extra welcome, special welcome. <laughs> <coughs> Tonight's session is on the art of writing and sketching and drawing as tools for your spiritual growth. And for those who don't know, my name is Rona, and I've been part of the Brahma Kumaris for 25 plus years, uh, practicing meditation. Uh, studying spiritual knowledge and exploring different tools to further your own understanding and your own spiritual growth. And I've been part of this center about two and a half years or so now. <coughs> the organization has centers like this uh, in different parts of even New York and New York State, but also part of the U.S. and the world where people come because they want to learn to meditate, they want to explore the spiritual dimension of life, they want to have some spiritual tools to deal with life, and to cultivate a more spiritual perspective on themselves. Who am I? Discover the hidden, invisible aspects of the self. And so tonight's session will be on how to use writing <laughs> and even more so drawing and painting. We have two people with us who actively do that. We have Monica Kalra who is a painting artist, artist and this painting is hers, one of her uh, arts. Uh, and she will explain more about how she uh, goes about it. She is a active student and meditator with the Brahma Kumaris. And we also have Mita Amin with us, who many of you must be knowing because she is very regular in the Thursday evening sessions. And she also makes uh, nice drawings. Some of you may have seen the drawings and the paintings already. So she will also share how she uses uh, art and, and, and sketching and drawing for her own spiritual growth, which is, uh, I am personally not an artist, although I love art. <laughs> and recently I have been more into listening and reading, uh, but um, I used to write a lot and also um, writing more as a tool to discover the self, to discover my thinking processes, to discover uh, deeper feelings inside, but also to help me formulate certain things. And writing is a very good tool for that. Because if we just think about something, we can just anything. But when you have to write it down, it has to become a bit more, what is it, specified, more clear, your, your uh, um, yeah, refined, but also you think things a bit more through, which I'm sure might probably also happen when you have to put it in, in, a, in a painting or in a sketch. Uh, and many of you may have seen my funny sketches, <laughs> which have also helped me a lot. So, <coughs> um, I'll just make a few of those sketches for those who haven't seen them. <laughs> but it is not possible to come regularly to this center and not have seen them. <laughs> <coughs> and writing and sketching helps me uh, um, become more introvert, first of all, 
because many of our thoughts, or first of all, we have many thoughts, isn't that? Anyone here who doesn't have that affliction? <laughs> Lots of thoughts. <clears throat> and many of those thoughts, they just all the time, uh, uh, what is the word? <laughs> are on the run in your mind all the time. <laughs> Running around in your mind all the time. And many of those thoughts are about things outside of us. Situation, people, objects, positions, possession, uh, situations, colleagues. They're all the uh, weather or, or politics or sports or whatever. There are things outside of us. Writing and also sketching helps me to be more in touch with what is truly under the surface of all that uh, uh, raising of the thoughts. What are my deeper motivations? What are my deeper intentions? How do I look at life? And one of the sketches that helps me uh, very much is that the whole physical world is just in a little box. The whole physical world, everything that happens, this body, past, present, future, uh, New York City and America and the whole world and also the moon and the stars is all in that little box. And in that little box, I draw the body, I draw the mighty dollar and some objects and job and country and uh, but there is a dimension beyond the physical and I exist as a being of consciousness. And I visit the physical world, use a body, and at some stage in time, I will leave this again. I, the inner being. And another painting that helps, uh, not painting, <laughs> sketch that helps me, is when we think of ourselves, many times we think of the body, but the inner being, the soul, the being of consciousness, the being of light, that is the thinking, feeling, experiencer, the one who uses this body as a vehicle. Now, and when drawing, or can I use drawing for this? <laughs> Sketching. <laughs> I don't want to offend anyone. <laughs> but when I sketch like this, it kind of uh, uh, gets imprinted within me deeper. And that feeling of soul, the inner being, the higher being, a being of consciousness, a being of energy, the real self, using this body as a vehicle, precious car. And this picture helps me to uh, uh, see how relative things are. No, because sometimes something happens and we make it so big. The power of intellect is to make it small. And because I do it visually, it helps, you know. Something someone said, 10 minutes, does it matter from this perspective? <coughs> and um, everything that now I am saying to you, I generally also write whilst I'm sketching. I just writing it out. And uh, seeing for myself is it, if it makes sense or not. 
Am I saying it right? And so when what happens when doing that, it slows down my thinking. So all those running thoughts that go all over the place are focused on the topic that I'm uh, sketching and I'm thinking about. And um, it slows down my thinking and it allows more the feelings also to emerge. <clears throat> this is very healing, I feel. When I look at a painting like this, I wish I could paint like that, but also the, the colors, it kind of gives a, it communicates a feeling also and an atmosphere. And um, especially in our information uh, society, um, to have that balanced, in our world, we think and think and think and concepts and information floods our mind. But to also learn to appreciate colors and forms and feelings more, it makes us internally more balanced. The, the left brain and the right brain are more in balance when we do that. And so this is a little bit how uh, absolutely artistically non-talented person <laughs> can still use <laughs> these tools to their own advantage for spiritual growth. And even use them for others also to <laughs> enjoy. What also happens is when we do this, you the heaviness of situations uh, is a bit dissolved. You're still thinking about certain even deep concepts, but because you're sketching, like for example this, you know, someone can be thinking, oh, my bag ache and my headache and my knees and this and that and uh, my diabetes and my hypertension, but when you draw the body like this, it puts a smile on your face. Because if you think of it like this, then you have all the heaviness of the body. So it, it shifts the mood into a more lighter, uh, uh, fun kind of feeling. And that is a healthy feeling also. And for us to bring out the beauty that is within our own being, we need to for the, that creativity to come out. We need to have fun also. Somehow we have forgotten to have fun. No? True. And then to have fun we, uh, what? We uh, forcefully go and have a party on a specific date and a specific <laughs> time. <laughs> and then <laughs> try to have fun on all this happy hour so we all have to be happy. But to get back into that kind of adventurous, bit fun mode towards life. There are enough things that are serious, there are enough things that you need, but why to, um, what is it, to deprive ourselves from a bit more lightness and fun. So these kinds of arts help us to, to get into those more healthy feelings. Any questions or comments so far? Then I would like to ask Mita to come and share now. She made this very sweet, cute, <laughs> little uh, drawings that have been on display for a while at the back, so some of you may have seen it already, but I mean, if you hear her talk about it, it's so beautiful. And she will share, come sit, and she will share her journey and share how she, how it has helped her, how it continues to help her. You want that one or you want them? It's better if you use this one. You 
hear me? Yeah. So these tiny paintings I have made, so basically they are from spiritual um, knowledge, God's knowledge. Uh, Sister Rona teaches at this center. So these all are from her teaching. Uh, <laughs> Raja Yoga teaching. Raja Yoga teaching, spiritual knowledge which she teaches here. Um, this one, this, this one, uh, and these all are based on meditation, different type of meditation you can do. So here this one says the medicine to diminish demons within us. So this picture has the picture of um, Maya and Ravan. This character Maya is an illusion. So this one tells like um, she's, she's taking the whole world in her veil. She's covering up. So this one tells that um, the whole, all the worldly, uh, world matters in the world. Uh, you want to enjoy everything, you know, but you don't want to get attached with it. So you don't want this Maya to control over you. You want to control Maya. So, <laughs> and this character Ravan, um, he has the all vices, all his heads are full of vices. So the vices are lust, ego, delusion, greed, pride, uh, envy, fear, ego, and jealousy. So what I do it, like uh, you look at this heads and you look what I have it, you know, we have we all have some kind of vices, so this helps like to um, please, uh, like um, analyze your vice and uh, focus how you can remove it and you know what you can do to control it. So that's basically it. So maybe you can share how you get to do it. Okay. What what happens within you before you start painting? So generally, most of my painting, the way when I do it, I feel some kind of in myself. Like I, I had like some, um, some of this like material, you know, I was like too much into material. So then all I was, you know, too much in the shopping and this and that and everything is was. And I was like, how can I control this? So I drew this. So, so everything most of the time goes in my mind and then reminds me sister's teaching, knowledge, spiritual knowledge. And uh, she gives examples. So this is the example she gave it one time. And to like, how can I get better? So then I drew it and I just focus like material, material, material. I, I enjoy, but I don't want to have control over it. So I clear up all this, whatever I didn't need it in my house and everywhere. So this is helping me to get better with things. This one is the little harder one. This is my latest one. And this one says the big ship sails in the sand when God is together. So. This, you know how hard it can be to move anything, even walking is so hard in the sand. But big ship is sailing in the sand. But so when you have company of God, like God's knowledge, when you have with you, any task, no task is impossible for you. So I was going through the impossible task and I, I almost resigned it because I was very afraid that I'm not going to be able to do it. Uh, by the way, I, I have my own practice in New York. Uh, I am licensed architect. And uh, um, even at this age, I like to do some new things in life. So I sometimes I assign it and then I draw back because age and everything, I'm like, I won't be able to do it. I won't be. So this picture just came, you know what? It's just miracle. It just came from nowhere, actually. All of a sudden, it just came to me and then I started drawing it. And this picture gave me so much power not to withdraw and just keep uh, doing it, what, what I was doing it, and I, I've been through. Yeah, so this was like uh, I wanted to do yoga training, and it was lots of physical practice, six hours, and I'm like, I, I, I'm not trained for that, so I won't be able to do it. 
and uh, it gave me so much power. So I, I would say uh, we all have something, you know, it's just a matter of bringing uh, from inside to out. So, so for everybody, it's the same thing. We just, yeah. And this one is a, this one says uh, adventurous thinking about sh self and life. So Sister Rona gives all the time, you might have heard her saying it, you know, she gives example about the batsman, the, the best batsman. So it says, I am the best batsman. I am going to hit the ball hard, no matter where it comes from. So, uh, so like this batsman, you want to be good in what you do. So we have to bring good within us. You know, we have inside our all capabilities, but it's just a matter of us bringing it out. So basically, you focus on things, less, less focus on obstacles and more focus on your goal and it just gets happen. So most of the time you think it's not going to happen, it's impossible, but let me tell you from my life's experiences, help comes from no matter where it comes to you. God's help or whatever you believe in, nature's help or people's help, it just comes to you when you have like true desire, it, it happens. So. Um, this is the lotus flower, um, and the lotus lotus flower. So it grows in a mud, right? And uh, how beautiful the flower grows, right? So no matter what type of environment we live in, you know, we complain that oh, it's all negativity here and there. So no matter what type of environment we live in or circumstances we are in, because. No, but no, uh, no place is perfect or no life is perfect going to be. We have to make it perfect, whatever we can help. So from this lotus flower teaches us that we have everything inside, you know, the purity, peace, power, love, happiness, joy. We have to bring it out and we have to bring that fragrance outside in this world. So... Um, this is the example of the saw, you know, saw cutter. So she gives all the time example of the woodcutter. So you might have heard the story, like woodcutter, you know, the cuts the wood, more more wood one first day, the last second day, less the after this, and the boss comes and say, why are you cutting less and less? And he goes, I'm working harder, but it's not happening. So he doesn't uh, sharp his saw. Same way, we have to sharp our intellect. And uh, so the, basically what I do is this kind of medit uh, picture. I mean, I don't just sit in close eyes. I, uh, you know, even in busy life, this kind of painting, you just look for some time and, you know, gives you some kind of inspiration that you have to sharpen your intellect, means you have to realize the wisdom is within you. So when you sharpen your intellect, like means wisdom with the, with the sitting in a meditation, quieting your mind, or go, any spiritual uh, material reading or anything you get, that knowledge helps you to take the right action. So instead of, you know where, when to act, where, where, when to withdraw, you don't want to get into big trap with anything, so that helps. So this is this about um, just sharpening your intellect. So that's all about meditation. It's just how it helps. And this is learn to take a step back to see the bigger picture. Here, the sister said, the world in a box. So sometimes you feel like the problem is so big in a life. You know, we all come up with a situation, nobody's life is perfect. It looks like somebody's life is perfect, but everybody goes through smaller, bigger, all kinds of obstacles in life. So look at the whole world you can fit in the box. So how your problem going to be big, you know, compared to the world is, so make the big problem small. That's, that's the intent of this. And, uh, and, and slowly it's going to disappear and the, something else come 
Also, we look, look at the big picture, like sometimes the problem looks big, but the intention, you know, end result is going to be great. So that also you keep in the mind. This picture is the declutter. Um, declutter your mind. So, so here you you. What I do is that I sit in a meditation and um, um, all kinds of when you sit in a meditation, all kinds of thoughts gonna come to you. And uh, like sister all the time tells that, you know, different type of thoughts, some are cyclic thoughts, comes, keeps coming over and over. During the day when you are working, doing anything, some are the waste thought, you don't need it, but it's there, it's just there. And uh, elevated thoughts, those you want to focus more on because those will energize you. So what I do is that you pretend like, same way you clean, you want to, same way you clean outside your house or anything, you want to clean your mind and whatever thought, waste thought you think, you don't need this time. Just pretend like you are emptying it out. So, that's, this one is about decluttering your mind. This is the very powerful painting and uh, I have used this painting uh, to take my fear, like diminish my fear. So in this painting, um, it, it, uh, on the top is the ocean. Sister says, the God is the ocean of love, peace, purity, uh, joy. Everything is above, the, I mean it shows. And you are sitting in a meditation, close eyes, and just pretend like He's showering, you know, he's showering, you are like flooding, like it's just pouring all the virtues above you. Uh, he's showering you with his love, his, his power, his purity, his joy, uh, his happiness. And uh, you feel so empowered. And if you, if you are empowered and you are so love, filled with love and everything, and you're going to go out, and how will your day going to be? Imagine how your day gonna be. Nothing can gonna hurt you, nothing gonna bother you. So you, you will have power to face whatever comes in your life on your day. So, and also this shows like protection is around you. The God's protection is around you. So you are protected. So no fear comes to you. Like, you know, you have all kinds of, we, uh, we all have fear. So it's, you feel like strength. So this is about. This is the same painting. Uh, the below is the world, material is filled up the material, and above is the soul world, true home. So this painting shows that um, the material all this, uh, you know, like we have um, offices and bank and house and school, college, um, the, the airport, railway station, shopping mall, theater temple, church, anything, like all the worldly matter. So everything is extra. Sister says all the time, you know, enjoy everything, but everything is extra. Take as a gift. So don't take it, everything is a, like permanent, uh, is your no possession. Don't, so more you will hold on to it, more it will give you, uh, you know, unpleasant feelings and all this. So. And at the end, we're going to go back home. And look, on the top, all these shiny stars, how peaceful it is. So we all are stars, energy. So we all are one because it's, um, so it brings you like how we all are one. It's just different uh, body form we have. But eventually, we're, we're going to go up. And then we are energy. So. This one is the Ganesh. Ganesh is a Indian god, and uh, it has an elephant uh, head. So the, everybody, like all the good occasions, like they have function, anything, they keep it uh, in the front, they pray this god. 
and who is the who is the destroyer of all obstacles so this painting it says that you feel the god's head of the blessing hand of the blessing above you and you become the destroyer of obstacles so you want to be ganesh with the you know you feel the god's blessing is above you all the time so um hope uh, hope you um liked it and maybe uh, i i want you also get inspired of drawing something or doing something which can help you in your life so thank you thank you <laughs> cute isn't it this is so sweet but it's also like such a healthy activity no and a positive activity not just in in terms of thinking that you're like busy in it so um we know time is running <laughs> and we want it for you also to do something and to have some activity but i want to ask monica first to come and share so then you can do some activity and uh, we were thinking if this is new for us to do this all of us but if it is really um, going well we might plan for a longer workshop on a saturday or a sunday so that we all really can kind of emerge our own creative artistic <laughs> energies but now first monica your sister and lovely sharing by meeta i'm very inspired by your art and it's very uh, experiential i would say so they talk they talk to you <laughs> so uh, my name is monica and i'm practicing yoga raj yoga since 4 years in a disciplined manner but i got introduced long ago and uh, i am an i am a artist and fashion designer by profession and i'm going to share how uh, uh, the art helped me in my uh, spiritual practices so i started uh, painting spiritual theme uh, along with meditation about 2 years ago and uh, the whole like we all are now aware of the energy and vibration the whole concept came from uh, to be able to experiment and uh, like uh, the vibration is our deep feeling or intentions right and i felt that this is a great idea to to express those intention and have a viewer uh, experience those feeling uh, those elevated feeling through art and also at the same time it was a experiment and practice for myself to be in that stage of uh, karma yoga like Uh, when you when you do some action along with good good thought elevated thoughts the most uh, good thoughts you can have in your mind and that's how your life is right what you think so the whole concept came from there and i i i started painting and as like we all are here we all are curious being right that's why we are here and we want to improve our spiritual practice and that should help us building our personality resolving our issues and live a good life so what's the problem and the one of the thing is is a thought which trapped us right and i think lot of us may say that thought came to me we don't take ownership of that so that is something like according to the data that Uh, average human mind create 40 to 60000 thoughts in a day so how do we drive our thoughts so this is one of the thing which you can do like uh, like when we were young and we want to register something in our mind we some of us like to journal it and it used to get in print in our in our intellect art is also in the same way so um it is a kind of like 
you know, when you are in, when you know you are that energy and you are drawing that energy, so it will get imprinted, imprinted into your intellect. So how about doing an experiment and trying uh, a little art? Maybe in, uh, you all can focus on center of your forehead and try to see your energy and there is no judgment, there is no right and wrong. You try to see how does it look, what color do you see. Just be very relaxed and very free about it and try to experiment with it. So we'll give you some clipboards and colors now and then you can start doing that. They will give some colors and some paper so everyone can color. And so this was the exercise that Monica gave. No? You all remember Monica? Maybe you will have to repeat exactly the exercise again. focus on the center of our forehead and try to see our energy. There is no judgments, there is no right or wrong. You just have to observe like what color do you see, what shape do you see and just be, just, just be concentrated within yourself and draw your energy. So it is the same method like we used to write a journal, uh, it get imprinted in our intellect so it is the same way when you draw, like our mind understand the language of visuals. So it is not see, see, but it is like as if internally see, feel, and there is a color to it, or colors, or forms, and, but just feel free. Yeah? Getting paper. So is what she's saying is just focus on the center of the forehead, become introvert, and kind of feel the feelings that are there and what would be the color that is with that. A color, a form, how would be your energy if you would have to paint it? But maybe Monica should show, share some of her paintings on that. <laughs> show. <laughs> she has three very beautiful paintings on that. You have your, you have your phone with you? Yeah. But just become introvert first and see what comes to you.
your artwork ready? <laughs> <coughs> so maybe I'll just share mine and then whoever wants to share. <laughs> so I was, the, the writing was life is a colorful adventure. So life is all these colors here. And then this is the body and uh, but the soul is meditating. So as if in my consciousness body disappears and focus goes. <laughs> Something like that. But it was just nice playing with colors. Yes. I felt it was so nice to play with colors. Colorful adventure. Anyway, so anyone wants to share? And then we'll have one more assign assignment. very specific because that's what I see when I am meditating that's where my focus is and I feel that's where my all energy is so so um, when I went within I saw a light in the corner and it reminded me of um, one of the rituals that I do every night. In my meditation, I do um, a healing meditation. Um, so meditation has become my medicine. And I, I feel like I, you know, health-wise, I, health -wise, I have improved so much because, you know, I do my meditations. And I go, yeah. It's pretty amazing, like I can feel the energy when I meditate, yeah. But when you're drawing, you feel like the impression goes deeper, no? The feeling is relived. Very good. Knowing that there is a world below and there is a, a, a cloud and a rain and a rainbow and so being, being a star. Yeah, being yeah. a star, yeah. being and an observer. Yeah. And there is a uh, world below. And seeing there, are other the, seeing there are other stars from distance or closer. Just a little floating. and. Yeah. Anyone else? So the drawing is very poor, but when I was meditating, I saw it like I feel that I'm cluttered with a lot of negativities and a lot of problems and all around me. But when I think beyond, look up and, and think with clear, clarity of mind, I see above that, okay, the problems are small, small dots, like maybe 10% or 20% of the entire life and 80% are good thing in life and the problem are, are also covered with good things and the re it, they result in good things. So eventually you should not like look around with the problems, but if you look up, all the blues are, are good things and small, small green dots above are just small problems. and. If you look beyond, they are not problems, but they might result in good things, or you have more other good things, then not only look at the bad things. You don't have to, no? Because uh, sometimes things are very personal. That's okay also. It's kind of simple to me, but it feels like a hurricane and I feel like I'm at the center. Everything is chaos, but I'm the the in the eye of the storm. That's how I feel. What, I feel. what does that mean? Does it mean you're the quiet 
Yeah, everything yeah, it's all going around like the Anyone else? Yeah. Okay. Tree and hearts. It's a tree as you grow and flourish, love grows. You love for yourself, love for others. So that's what. <laughs> yeah, with roots and anyone else? Okay, then you want to say something, Monica, before we my my observation was that like when we shifted our consciousness to our eternal self, our perspective become very positive about everything. Yeah. Like if you notice for yourself, if you are otherwise thinking about those problems, you would not reflect in that way. But these are those impressions which will make your personality. Maybe. Sister Ron, yeah. I can <laughs> add to that. No, it is very beautiful no, that because we are kind of doing this, there are things and everyone has kind of things, but it, it kind of shifts, it gets a more, uh, yeah, a certain lightness and a positive, yeah, positive is the word, very good word. So use the, your tools, use these tools. These crayons don't cost much. <laughs> and you can just have some copy printing paper <laughs> and, and use it. So now the, uh, the other part, sometimes we try to do too much, no? Writing and drawing in one hour. <laughs> but we just wanted to give another tip because maybe not everyone resonates with one. And I think actually it is useful also to do both and sketching and draw and writing. But we all are familiar probably with the ho having a journal, no? people keeping a journal of their day and uh, a diary. But if you use it as a spiritual tool, then it is useful to, to, um, to observe and write things down that are spiritual in nature. So for example, you may have gone through a day and there were certain things, and then instead of describing what happened, write down the lesson or the gift you had from that, from that day. And so that you can, as if uh, you're digesting it, and at the, at the same time you're empowering yourself, instead of just narrating what happened. And if you can uh, make a, an image or a sketch with it, it even like a double impression. Uh, like some of these paintings of Mita, you know, the batsman or so, it is like um, you're digesting a situation but you're empowering yourself. So uh, when you're writing, uh, that is one way that you can write. Uh, in, in a kind of a spiritual diary format, but focusing on empowerment, focusing on uh, 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 what is the gift that that situation has brought me, how has it empowered me, hmm? or how can I do it next time in a different way to deal with that. So that is one way you can use writing. You can also use writing to understand a certain concept. Now, say for example, uh, we often talk the soul as a guest. For example, soul as a guest in this world. It's a concept. But if you write it out, things become more clear. What does it mean to be a guest? What are the feelings of a guest? And what is the perspective of a guest? And if you write it out, it becomes clear. 
or our uh, the supreme soul, another concept, or, or karma, as you sow, so you reap. There are many slogans that we could use to just write uh, on it to maybe aim to understand. Hmm? But it is always good if you do that, how can I use this in my daily life? And write that also. So that, you, that it becomes like a practical thing, not a, just a philosophical exercise in your mind. Which is also a miss, but <laughs> it is useful if you can apply it practically. Another way to uh, use writing is to hold certain visions, to make certain visions clear. No? And uh, so, um, what we will do now before we finish today is you write down a vision for yourself. But not in a worldly way, I want to be rich in the next three years and I want to have a better. I'm not saying that that is wrong, you can also do that, but here in terms of where would you want to, what is your vision for yourself in terms of character? What is your vision for yourself in terms of your mood and your wisdom? Say within the next five years or, t or whenever you, however time. What is your vision for yourself? Hmm? And what will you do to make that vision a reality? Is it a bit clear? Hmm? To make it very practical, but make it also not uh, irrealistic. In, in terms of the practical step, it should not be, oh, every day I'm going to meditate eight hours. You know, <laughs> like that. Don't <laughs> make it practical, simple, and, and but really helpful. You said uh, my vision of myself, of yeah. my character. Yeah, in terms of, of my yeah. No, that is okay. That's enough already, I think. Uh, how would, how do I see myself, say, in five years' time? What, how would I want to be? Say, for example, I would want to be uh, more tolerant in, in my interactions with others, uh, someone who is not easily uh, put down by... Uh, political situations or whatever, you know, just be very clear how you want your character to be, the vision of yourself in terms of character. And what will, you, what will help you get there? And if you want to sketch, feel free, you have your, uh, uh, what is it, crayon.
wanted to share how I see myself five years down the line. So that's me in five years. <laughs> so glowing and my aura is expanding. And there are a few things I want to do. I want to work upon myself. So I wanted to be fearless and tolerant, more tolerant and powerful. I think they go hand in hand. Loveful, again, this is also related. Uh, the more loveful you are, then only you can be fearless, joyful. And I wanted to have, I'm just thinking of the, the perfect self right now. <laughs> I'm very motivated and right now and see, uh, see it as a reality. I feel it as a reality. So harmony within myself and with everything around me and my deep bond with the source uh, I mean that is very intimate very intimate relationship with the source and serving the world that also I see and a few a uh, few things in this in this physical world which I've also written uh, for my professional life as an artist I want to grow and I want to help my uh, f relationship in in this physical life to help them uh, uh, in in eternal manner and also in their physical life I want to help them yeah. So this is uh, from when we draw our own energy. So that's me. So I started with the point where uh, I've come from. That's me. And then I came down to this physical world. And that's me. Uh, again, I have, I, I see myself when in meditation at my best stage. So this is my best stage where uh, the the aura the aura is expanding and it is also serving the world in a way if you see that this is the tiny me and then aura is expanding that much because I am within myself realizing my virtues and have a very good feeling and that's how uh, it is spreading in the world and People are also feeling that. And this painting, Sister Rana asked me to explain. So this painting is about uh, soul world. So as you all can see the source there, the world which is full of light, full of bliss, and the supreme soul is uh, you all must have been introduced that he is an ocean of peace, ocean of love, ocean of all the virtues. And for us when we meditate, so to get that power, there is some sanity, sanity we have within ourselves, but our batteries are depleted right now. To recharge our battery, we have to connect with someone very powerful, right? And that is the one and only the source. So we go there to this place to get power to become like him. So this painting is about soul world. And we all can try meditating, looking at the painting and figuring out which star you are, where you sit. You're only one and only connection who knows your journey from starting to end, your one unique relationship.
Okay, well, hope you enjoyed. <laughs> bit different than normal, but um, very useful, I think. So, <coughs> we'll close with a few moments of silence, but you reflect on what your artwork, your drawing or your writing, or, or you can reflect on this one also, and just kind of get into that feeling of the, the more invisible, subtle and intangible. And whilst you become introvert, and explore the more subtle, the invisible, the being of consciousness that is you. And allow that pure, innocent, wise part And as if acknowledge that that is you. And reflect on what you have been writing and drawing tonight.
Thank you, Om Shanti. It was so quiet and so <laughs> I didn't want to stop. Thank you for participating. Those who are here for the first time, if you would like to be um, receiving our program on a monthly basis in your email, then please sign up 